This is the Berman Project. Hey, it's JD here, back for another week of introspection and reflection on grief, depression, and the pathway to mental wellness, all the while nourishing my soul with the music and art of late indie rock singer-songwriter David Berman. How the fuck are you doing, everybody? Uh, I am okay, uh, despite my recent uh, disappearing act in the midst of season two. I am A-OK. In fact, I went to visit my sister in British Columbia, and then I went and visited my friend Tim in Portland, and overall had just a wonderful time, just a real wonderful time. And I made it back, and I thought, uh, I need to get an episode out. So that's what I'm doing. So there's that. I'm looking out my window right now. It is gray. It is full on winter. Here we are in the new year. It's January. And I think that um, I'm experiencing the opposite of what I normally experience at this time of year. I'm feeling pretty good. After several weeks of shittiness and not feeling great. I can tell you that I feel pretty good. And it's got to be this new drug I'm on. It's got to be. It's concurrent with my getting this new drug that I am feeling the way I'm feeling. I had to titrate up from 25 to 100 because apparently it gives you a rash if you just start at 100, uh, which is bananas. Uh, But these drugs are bananas. They truly are, you know, going in and lifting the hood on your brain and rewiring shit. And uh, yeah, I don't know how how to feel about that. (laughs) But it's working. You know, I'm in the front seat and I'm turning the car over and the engine is fucking starting. It's fucking starting. And this is great news for people who like great news. So there's that. I have uh, begun work on the Pavement Top 50 podcast. So that's going to be Mondays. So because it's going to be Mondays and Fridays, actually, as well, uh, I'm shifting the Berman Project to Wednesdays. So going forward, Berman will be out on Wednesdays, and we'll go from there. Uh, We'll start today, and we will go from there. I'm sorry that I'm always doing this kind of housekeeping. You know, it seems at this point that I should be uh, more together, um, less of a fuck up. Uh, You know, (laughs) all that good stuff, but I'm not. Uh, I am still the JD that is uncool and underqualified. And yet here I am doing what I'm doing. So there's that. I can tell you that, uh, you know, on my trip west, I uh, went out on a shoestring and I just leapt. I just leapt and said, this is going to work out. This is going to somehow work out. And you know what? It fucking somehow worked out. I had just enough money to make it work. And I didn't go into debt to uh, do this trip. So that's you know, fucking great. Uh, because money is definitely, I'm learning a big, big thing with me. Um, a trigger, I suppose, or, or a result maybe is, is a better way to put it. It's a result of me being triggered. I tend to try and spend my way out of things, my feelings, uh, on ridiculous things. And uh, things that will give me an instant dopamine hit. So, you know, uh, I get that rush of excitement and adrenaline and just that good feeling, you know, that really good feeling. Speaking of good feelings, I've cut way down. Uh, well, December was a rough month. Uh, 
September and October, no, October and November, I cut way down. Uh, I think in November I had 30 drinks. Uh, in December I had 90. So I was up, you know, by 200%. Um, which isn't great, but uh, I feel like I've got things under control. I feel like I've got both hands on the wheel to keep the driving metaphor going. Uh, and that's good. That's a good feeling to feel <laughs> in control of your, you know, fucking idiocies. Um, and yeah, I am. I'm feeling in control. It's, uh, it's good. Now, I, I had to scrape the bottom to get here. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I was really fucking low. Uh, which is part of the reason why I didn't record. But I've been told by several people, those are the episodes that you like the best. Those are the ones where, you know, the raw and honest JD comes out and you you get to hear uh, how I'm dealing with things. And, and oftentimes you can relate to how I'm dealing with things. So that's good. As opposed to, you know, me coming in and jumping through hoops and saying, oh my God, everything is fantastic. Everything is great. <laughs> uh, I like the perfect air crickets, air crickets, air crickets, air crickets, air Mother and child with magazine. Into a story, into a dream. Why is there something instead of nothing? And how is the asking built into the hunting? Every 
don't step on that shit, JD. You gotta, you gotta live it. You gotta just leave it and let it just resonate. And uh, that's what I did. That's a pretty good fucking song, right? This is a great record. There, there's a reason why this is um, considered, you know, one of the best records, indie rock records of the 90s, and certainly among the best in the catalog of the Silver Jews. Where does it rate for you? Send me an email, jd at meetingmalchemist.com. would love to hear from you. It would be uh, cool to hear where you rank your Silver Jews records. I just recently spoke with somebody who really likes the early stuff who really likes Die Map of the Reef. And that was surprising to me. I like the more melodic stuff. So this this song is very melodic and mysterious as well. I, I, I don't quite understand the lyrics. I don't, I definitely don't understand the title. Like, like, the, 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 death. <laughs> um, like, like, the, 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 death. Um, everyone's coming back to Christmas for Texas. Folks who watch their mother kill an animal know that their home is surrounded by places to go and the West has made a deal with the sun. Good Lord. The man is uh, so gifted and so talented. It's uh, just a, an absolute travesty that he's no longer with us. Let's celebrate the man a little bit more with one of his poems now. This is part two of... The poem that we started last week, it comes from Actual Air, uh, the collection of his works, uh, and it is Self-Portrait at Age 28. So Self-Portrait at Age 28, Part 2. I can't remember being born, and no one else can remember it either, even the doctor who I met years later at a cocktail party. It's one of the little disappointments that makes you think about getting away, going to Holly Springs or Coral Gables and taking a room on the square with a landlady whose hands are scored by disinfectant, telling the people you meet that you are from Alaska and listen to what they have to say about Alaska until you have learned much more about Alaska than you will ever will about Holly Springs or Coral Gables. Sometimes I'm buying a newspaper in a strange city and I think, I'm about to learn what it's like to live here. Oftentimes, there's a news item about the complaints of homeowners who live beside the airport, and I realize that I read an article on this subject nearly once a year and always receive the same image. I'm in bed late at night in my house near the airport, listening to the jets fly overhead. A strange wife is sleeping beside me. In my mind, the bedroom is an amalgamation of various cold medicine commercial sets. There is always a box of tissue on the nightstand. I know these reoccurring news articles are clues, flaws in the design, though I haven't figured it out how to string them together yet. But I'm noticing that the same people are dying over and over again. For instance, Minnie Pearl, who died this year for the fourth time in four years. That is Autobiography at Age 28, Part 2. We will continue this series next week, next Wednesday. As I mentioned, we're switching up the dates that this podcast will drop. It will drop on Wednesdays going forward. That's um, some pretty incredible work. That is uh, the, the ending with the, I guess it's sort of like a Mandela effect, you know, where, where he's imagining that Minnie Pearl has died several times in one year. When in fact she's alive, uh, I just saw a tweet today, and it was Hulk Hogan. Um, it might might have been an old tweet, but I saw it today. It's Hulk Hogan, and he's lamenting the death of Bam Margera, uh, and then Bam responds to him, "Hey man, I'm still <laughs> I'm still alive." Um, you know that uh, mini pro bit is is almost you know akin to that. Uh, it's it's fascinating actually. Uh, The whole poem is great. When it's done, I'll release it as a standalone as well, the whole thing, so you can enjoy it all. And uh, we'll go from there. But that's what I've got for you this week. Uh, You know, to summarize, I'm in a pretty good place. I'm in a good mood. We listened to a great fucking song. We heard part two of a great fucking poem. And now we're going to bid adieu.
So there's that. Stay hungry, stay foolish, and wash your goddamn hands. The Berman Project is a production of Duvra Podcasts and Such. You can find out more about the show at www.thebermanproject.xyz. That's right. I'm fucking Canadian. I'm also social. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, and all the rest at Berman Project. Podcasts and such. <laughs>